What is going on guys, this is Johnny of which in YouTube and welcome back to another video in the Android Studio app development tutorials. And today we're gonna do some code optimization guys. And I'm sorry for not uploading a video last week, but if you follow me on Instagram, um on Instagram, hmm, well, what's wrong with that? No, actually it's Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, which you can also find on the bottom right right now. That's actually my Twitter account. And if you follow me on there then you probably have seen my tweet that um, I won't be able to make a video because I was really sick last week. Really, really sick, so I had a terrible headache. I was, you know, just knocked out completely. Um, and that was quite a flu, actually. <laughs> and because of that, I couldn't make a video at all. I wasn't able to concentrate or work on any projects for like a week. But now I'm back. I still don't feel as well as before that whole flu, but I'm I'm well now. So I think we can make this video and yeah, so let's do that right now. Okay, I already mentioned we're gonna do code optimization mainly and that's because we actually have a lot of problems or not not really problems, but I think the code we made right here and, and this method right here is not as efficient as it could be. So we definitely want to change that right now to free up some resources essentially. So to do that, um, first we have this database.update uh, method. And that actually returns an integer and that's what we are returning right here. So as you can see we are turning, we are turning this integer from that uh, database.update method. and if we do it like that, we cannot actually get rid of our SQLite database object. So we actually want to close that database again um, to, again, free up some resources. So to do that, we're going to need to create a variable. And that's going to be an integer because that's what we want to return. Oh, caps lock, damn it. So integer. And then we're basically just going to, yeah, just going to move this. So just cut it out and paste it in here. And then we just need to return the integer. And that would actually be the rows affected. Because what this actually returns is how many rows were affected of this update. So that's actually something you need to know because that's not actually returning the I don't know the ID of the content which is updated, it's returning the rows which were affected of this update. So we're gonna return rows affected. Okay. And now we can actually close the database. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So just do db.close. Alright, so now the next method, and actually the last one in our database handler class at least, uh, would be the get all contacts method. And that's something you should never ever do. And that's creating an object over and over again in a loop. That's just horrible, horrible practice. Don't ever do that. I don't know. I don't know what I've done here. But it was really, it's really inefficient. And we have to change that definitely because what this basically means it's gonna create a new contact object every single time, and it's not actually going to get rid of an old um, contact object, and it's never actually going to reuse an old contact object. Well, that's terrible practice, terrible. So we definitely have to get rid of this, and I like to get rid of this completely, but you can also uh, create a the contact variable. You can just create this up here. And you can do contact contact, and then you could reassign this every time you loop through this uh, while loop. So yeah, that's pretty much what you can do. That would be an option. That's really up to you. But I don't really like to create any sort of object at all because, of course, it reserves a spot for that in the memory of computer um, or of the device in that case. Um, so we actually want to oh. Damn it! I should have copied that. Sorry. So I actually don't want to create an object at all. Uh, I, we are creating an object, but I don't want to actually use it or store it in a variable. So we're gonna copy that and paste that in here, and we're good to go. So now we can actually get rid of our contact object, and now we're good to go. All right. So let me just quickly check. Okay, so now once we've done that, what we can actually do, we can close the database and close the cursor as well. That's really quite important. So close the cursor and close the database. Again, frees up some resources. Really important. So now our code is way more efficient and that's just exactly what we wanted. So we're good to go, I guess. So I actually, 
I don't know. Haven't seen any other problems, so I think we're good to go. Alright, so now we're in our main activity class. There are a few things which I started to realize now, and that's basically that this list population thing, that we are populating the list with every single contact, with each contact we add, that's just terribly wrong, because it does that by itself. We don't actually have to repopulate the list every single time a new contact is added. We don't have to do that, it does that automatically, so it actually says, okay, all the contacts in our contacts list, um, all of these are going to be yeah, displayed in the list view. So that's actually a feature which is already implemented in this custom adapter we made. Okay, so we can actually get rid of this one right here completely. Okay, and now we want to actually create another function, and we of course want to change that in a second because this is really redundant right here. We can definitely get rid of this as well. But right now, I just want to create another another method, and that would be a private boolean. That's because that's actually going to return a bool, and that's basically going to be uh, contact exists. So it's basically going to check if a contact exists, and we're we actually have to pass the user uh, a contact here, and yeah. All right, so right now we're just gonna return false, so we can get rid of the error, and that's actually gonna stay here. So yeah, have this all laid out already. <clears throat> so now we have to basically yeah actually we can just quickly do that. So right now we're just gonna create a new string, call this name, and then we're just gonna call the get name method we made in our contact class. And by the way, that's something that a lot of people actually don't know as well. Um, and that's actually that you have to avoid putting something like that in a loop. So if you can take a look at that, you know, that's actually not happening. But if we have like a for loop, which we're actually going to use, and we are calling this method over and over again, it's going to you know, be really resource consuming and it's really gonna harm your performance, definitely. The performance of your app is gonna go, you know, it's gonna be terrible. Um, especially if you have something like, let's say, the get contact method right here. And if you call that over and over again, it would do everything which is in this method over and over again. So let's say we have our get all contacts method and we are just calling this get contact method we made over and over again and store all the contacts which we are getting from the cat contact method in a list, uh, then, oh my god, this is terrible. Just don't ever, ever do that. That would really, if we have, like, so it probably won't matter if you have, like, three contacts, but if you have, like, a thousand contacts, it would really matter quite a lot. It would be extremely slow. Your yeah, app performance would be terrible and, yeah, <laughs> really bad practice. Okay. So string name contact dot get name we got that and then we actually want to have a context count and to get that we are basically gonna do contacts dot size again the contacts dot size is also a method so that's not actually a field or just a variable you you know call or get that's really a method so we don't want to call that over and over again in the loop so now we can actually get to the for loop which would be for integer i equals zero, just the standard procedure. And now we do i is less than contact count. And it would basically uh, call this context, if you, if you were to put context.size in here, then it would call this method over and over again. That's something that some people might not know. So I'm just telling you it's like that. <coughs> Give you some facts. <laughs> All right. So now let's create our for loop right here, and we basically want to put an if statement in here, and that would be if name dot compare to, and then we're going to use ignore case, because we basically want to check if the name of this contact right here we pass through already exists in our contacts list right here, and we don't really want to pay attention to any character casing within that uh, string, so we are using the dot compare to ignore case method. All right, so now we're just going to need to put in another string here, actually the string we want to compare to, and that would be contacts.get, and then i, and then dot .get name, like so. And if that happens, and if that's equal, if that equals to zero, 
Um, so if that uh, method returns zero, then we want to return true. So that contact exists then. That's basically what this method does. Okay. At all comparison done in Java, I think that's always going to be zero if the strings match, or if you know the objects you compare, uh, you know, with each other are matching, then it's going to return zero always. It's something I told you as well. Okay, okay, okay. So then another thing which I want to improve is actually this set enable thing. That's actually kind of depreciated. You, uh, you actually don't use that anymore. So what we would do now? You actually don't use dot to string in Java at all. Like, oh, you hardly use that. But in C sharp, you use that all the time if you want to um, convert something to a string. So this method right here actually works, but it's you shouldn't use it like that. So what I want to do, I'm gonna put one bracket in here because I actually want to use string dot value of, and now we can actually use this method right here. So now that's much better practice, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So now we're done with that. Um, what we actually want to do, we want to change our, yeah, this code right here. All right. Now we want to actually change the sub statement, but I'm going to do that in a second. So now we are going to get to the list. Dot get all contacts. Yeah, because what we can actually do, we don't need to create another list or anything. Because we can simply change all of that code to contacts dot add all, and then it asks for a collection, and a collection would be get all. Oh, actually, forget to call the db handler dot get all contacts, and the list is a collection. Therefore, we can use it like that. Really, it's really no problem. But then we want to add another if statement in here because that's important. We want to see if there are contacts uh, in our database. So we're going to do if db handler dot get contacts count is not equal to zero, and then we're going to get add all the contacts because if no contact is in there, I think it's just going to return something empty. I don't know probably something like that, so I don't really want to risk it, therefore I use this if statement. Okay, and now what we can do, we can simply use the populate list method we made every single time, so it doesn't matter, we just put it in our onCreate method right here, and we're good to go. We don't need anything else, we just use populate list and we're good. So we can actually remove this up here, well, I think we've already done that. Yeah, I think we've done that already. Ah, okay. Alright. Pretty good. Okay. So now, yeah, we're good to go, I think. Yeah, okay, let me let me just quickly check. So we get out the contacts, we're creating that contact, we're adding that to the list. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Perfect. So that's actually um, how we improved our code now. And that's working perfectly. And one thing we want to, of course, check is actually want to see if that contact exists. So we want to use the bool method we just made. So we're going to do if, oops, if contact exists. Now we're going to need to pass to the contact we just made, so contact. Um, then we basically want to, okay, what? It expanded all that. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Then we basically want to add the contact to the list we have up here, and we want to create that contact in our database. Alright, guys. So that's pretty good. So if that contact exists, we want to do all of that. Oh, actually, we want to do all of that. Uh, if the contact doesn't exist. And then I'm just going to use, because I don't want to use else, we're just going to do a return, so it's not actually going to do anymore. Yeah, that's a void, so that we be good. Okay, basically want to return. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Um, thank you. Okay. <laughs> and we, this is basically replaces the else statement, so all I want to do if that's if that's not true, if, uh, if it doesn't, if it does exist, we want to make a toast as well. So toast dot 
make text, get obligation contacts, Con contacts, contacts, damn it. Oh, wow, <laughs> wow. So name txt, dot get text, and oh, we're gonna need to use string the value off for that. Totally messed that up as well. String dot value off plus already exists. Please use a different name. Okay, and now we're gonna do toast dot length short. And then we wanna show that. And quickly let's get rid of the dot to string right here and let's use string dot value of. Actually we can concatenate that and then it's gonna be converted to a string automatically, but I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Guys, finally, we're done with this. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully there are no errors on this app. And now we're actually going to check if the app works. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, so now we're back in our app. And now we're actually going to create a new contact right here. So let's go into our list. And now we actually have some guy and some girl in here. And I actually created a contact because I tested the app a second ago. It was actually called, I don't know, Madrigal. <laughs> really. Nothing special. So now we want to create the contact Madrigal. And we're actually using a capital M right here. And now if you want to add the contact, just say Madrigal already exists, please use a different name. And the contact has not been added. So now if you use Madrigal and add the contact, it says Madrigal has been added to your contacts. And if you take a look here, then it says Madrigal right here. So at the moment, this layout um, or these elements of our list view are really messed up. So that's something we're going to do in the next tutorial and we're also going to talk about deleting contacts in the next tutorial guys so really stay tuned for that that was just a lot of code optimization we had to do but now we're good to go and i will be putting this on github pretty pretty soon so yeah thank you very much for watching guys the source code is as always in the description of the video and please follow me on twitter if you want to receive any updates on my channel um, and what I'm working on, some projects, and just in general, some information on videos I make, and I'm planning to make and all that. So yeah, at Johnny Manson IC, um, see you later, bye.